let's start by collecting various data points from the environment. Language, English, Dutch and others. Date 19th of April. Estimate full capacity. 90%. What I've been attracted to in live coding from the beginning is the, the low stakes. The fact that you can take risks and fail and it's not the end of the world. There's sort of this low threshold that allows you to just play. How many black women are here? And this year, what I'm seeing in terms of trending is a continuation into the expanding definition of algorithm and its use in other disciplines like dance and other types of choreographies. It can be used to uniquely identify users and it is achieved by embedding JavaScript code into the website and it is usually performed without a user's knowledge. A lot of my experiments lie on choreography as the lenses through which I look at coding practices. Now please stand up if your age is between 35 and 44. The more I go into ICLC conferences, the more I see different takes on what liveness means, but also how you relate to code as well. It just feels always like a learning experience coming to ICLC. I guess I'm not the typical live coder in the sense that I'm not using programming languages that are meant for live coding, like Super Collider or Chuck. I mainly use Python, and I recently developed a system to live code uh, sequences and music scores with a little pond like languages. Live coding to me is mostly about creativity and improvisation. It's about uh, instant composition and experimentation. good that it's so much focused on this practice because this practice is very much celebrated within the digital arts. Uh, on the other hand, it's not so much represented on an academic context. That aspect of bringing the whole community together, but it also manages to get a, a level of visibility that we can keep expanding the community and to really solidify those ties and to keep that community strong. I do think it's important. It's kind of like a family reunion in that way.